Okay, we have another one. We want to find the exact value by using reference angle, or we also want to indicate the reference angle. This time, for this problem, we're working in degrees. Whenever you have a problem that has a negative angle, the best thing to do would be to use the even and odd property we talked about in this session to change this into a, re or rewrite it into an angle that's positive. That's going to make things easier when we do our exact value and reference angles. Reference angles uh, assume that you have a positive angle. So we're going to do that in this case. The formula that we're going to use that we talked about previously would be this. Secant of negative t is the same thing as secant t. So what that says is that the even though you have a negative angle, uh, the formula says that for secant that you can actually just rewrite it without the negative in there. These are both equal to each other. We showed that earlier with the unit circle. So because of that, we're going to apply that to our problem here. I have secant negative 210 degrees. That's going to equal secant 210. I can just remove the negative completely and now this is what it looks like rewritten as a positive angle. Now, you, you may, still may have to draw this in standard position to find out what quadrant you're in to get the correct reference angle formula. So I am going to do that. I'm not going to do negative 210. I'm actually going to do this one now that I've rewritten it as a positive angle. So I'm going to rewrite this uh, and draw this in standard position. 210 would be an angle that's drawn there. This would be positive 210 degrees and this would be written in the uh, third quadrant. If you're in the third quadrant, that's now we know what formula to use for reference angle. So in order to find the exact value, that's a three-step process that we previously talked about. The first step would be to find the reference angle. So in this case, I'm in the third quadrant. My reference angle formula is going to be theta minus 180. So I have 210 degrees minus 180. If I subtract that, I get 30 degrees. So right there, I can put 30 degrees on my first blank here that answers the first part of the question. I'm in step one of step three, so I need I have three more steps I have to or two more steps I need to do uh, to find the exact value. So second step, you apply the trig function to the reference angle. What's the trig function? It's this one right here. It's secant. So I need to do secant of 30 degrees. Now to do secant 30, we have a couple different options of how to do that. We know that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So I could just go to my table, look at cosine 30 degrees, and then take the reciprocal of that number, and that's going to be my answer. Or I can, the other way I can look at that is secant is the same thing as a 1 over x. We talked about that before with unit circles. And that's also the same thing as 1 over cosine. So I can consider that as a 1 divided by cosine 30 degrees. That's the same way of looking at secant, same thing as 1 over cosine. And now cosine 30 I can get off of the unit circle. That would be square root of 3 over 2 is the, the exact value there. And I need to flip this. So when I flip it, I get 2 over square root of 3, but it's always good to rationalize your answer. So therefore, 2 square root of 3 over 3 would be the answer for step number 2. This right here would be the exact value if the problem was just written as secant 30. For step number 3, I really am working with secant 210 though. I'm not working with 30. I'm working really with secant 210. So in step 3, you have to apply the appropriate sign. It'll have the same numerical value as this, but I have to decide whether I need to add a minus sign or not to it. I'm in the third quadrant. If I do all students take calculus, all students take. That means that t represents tangent. Tangent would be po the only one positive in the third quadrant. That means everything else is going to be negative. So that means that both sine and cosine would be negative in the third quadrant. The, the same sign that you have for cosine is also the same sign you're going to have for the secant. So if cosine is negative in the third quadrant, that means that secant also has to be negative in the third quadrant. Those go together. Just like sine and cosecant, those go together. And cotangent and tangent, those have the same sign also. So that's how you can use your all students take calculus sign chart to do that. If cosine is negative, that means that secant's got to be negative also. So therefore, my final answer is going to be 2 square root of 3 over 3. It has the same numerical value as step number 2, but I had to apply negative only, again, because it's in the third quadrant. Cosine's negative in the third quadrant. That means that secant is negative. So that completes my problem. Here is my negative 2 square root of 3 over 3. 
And that completes the problem of answer both the exact value and the reference angle.